see you. This is my end of the year ASMR video. It's become somewhat of a tradition for me now while I'm not actively making ASMR videos to still do one every once in a while. And I think the last one I did was around the end of the year as well. So I would like to do a variety of things for you and make this a really nice video. My quality is not going to be amazing because um, I've moved and uh, I've got kids and I'm currently in my home office, which is quite bare still, but I have so much crap on the floor right now that you can't even see because it's about Christmas time and there's boxes and boxes and everything like that for gifts. So. This is not going to be one of those uh, really high production value videos, but hopefully I can still bring the tingles. It's funny. Um, ASMR videos are so, like, unique in how you make them. And, you know, when you make them so infrequently, it's easy to kind of get out of practice. So I, I remember when I would make videos, you know, weekly, or multiple times a week, I uh, just had such a sense of what would be triggering, what would not be triggering, and all of that. So, I don't know, hopefully it's like a bike and it, and it comes back. I wanted to do a variety of things, so I'll do some uh, just ear-to-ear -ear talking and catching up about my, my year and things like that here. I thought maybe we'll make a drink. I thought that it would be nice to show you some of my ornaments on the tree, which I've done before, but I really like doing that. And we'll see what else we get. But, um, yeah, I thought it'd be a good time. So, 2018, um, 2018 has been a really interesting year. It's actually been a really, really good year overall. Um, most importantly, in January, I had my second well, my wife had, we welcomed our second son, Leo. So now we have uh, Remy and Leo. Leo is going to be turning one soon, and Remy's going to be turning three in not too long. And it's crazy. We have two crazy little boys running around the house. Um, Remy is talking. He basically has a full vocabulary, understands everything you say. He's in school. Um, he goes to this awesome Montessori school with, a, a, like, acres of land and a garden and animals like goats and many horses and a pig. And they have a yurt that they do their music in, all sorts of cool stuff. And he's, his imagination is blowing up right now. Remy says, he'll, he'll be walking around and go, oh no, fire, over there, fire the fire get it fire truck whew, whew, water on like he he just has the biggest imagination right now and leo just started walking he's about you know 11 months and he just started walking you know probably within the last month and he's full on walking now that's like his primary mode of, mode of transportation and it's just crazy we upgraded him to like a big kid car seat today actually and it's just, it's wild. We are not having any more kids. I took care of that shortly after Leah was born. But, um, so, so this is basically, it, we're just going to watch them grow. And this is going to be, this is going to be it. They are crazy. They are frustrating. They are um, hard-headed and all of that. But they're also amazing and the sweetest boys and so funny. So goddamn funny. <laughs> And it's been an adventure. So that's been a really important part of the year. We also moved. I did a whole vlog about it. So some of you probably know that already. But I do know that some of you don't watch my other videos. You just watch the ASMR stuff. And that's totally cool. But we moved. Um, we moved to a little town called Ojai in Southern California. It's basically like a little small town in the middle of a valley. 
and it wasn't too far from where we were living before. It's like, a, I don't know, like half an hour or so drive away from where we were living before, but it's like much more insulated and it's pretty cool because we live really close to the downtown area and we can, we just walk everywhere. That's what we've been doing. We've just been walking everywhere from the park to wineries to restaurants. We basically, I mean like today, um, we woke up, I took Remy to school, came back, and then we walked to our favorite little coffee shop, Joelle and I, sat down, um, did some playing together, worked on a few things together, and then we went our separate ways, uh, went to like an antique shop and a bookstore, and we met up at noon and got a beer at the, the brewery over here, and then walked back home, and so many days are like that for us, it's like, we're really, really lucky, and it's been awesome. It's been a really fantastic change for us. And the park over here is amazing. There's so much more to do for the kids. And there's like the whole sort of small town effect where you, you meet people and you actually see people multiple times. And, you know, you might be, um, at like, for instance, I was at that coffee shop I was talking about the other day. And I heard some people, um, a few women that were having like a little mastermind group. They were talking about each of their projects. And one of them was an educational therapist, which is uh, something I've actually been looking for to refer patients of mine to. And so we, I, I introduced myself and we networked and we just had a meeting recently and we're kind of potentially going to be collaborating together. So a lot of stuff like that happens and it's just been a really good thing for us. One of the one of the downsides right now about where we're living, um, our house is cool. We're, we're renting a house and it's amazing to have our own place. That's not an apartment. We were previously living in like a condo. It was like three floors, but, um, we just had like office and garage and then living space and then bedrooms upstairs. And, um, now it's all one floor, which is, which is cool. Um, we, the house is really, really cute, but it's really old. <laughs> It's a damn old house and there's a lot of quirks to it and that's been annoying and um the landlord well i guess the property management company was really really they've been bad we moved in and like so many things didn't work <laughs> including there's like a small gas leak and all kinds of crap but it's just about fixed up by now everything is about you know handled um but one of the disadvantages compared to our old place is that my um at home office, which is where we are right now, shares a wall with the boys' bedroom. So you might hear some coughing in the background because I have a couple little stuffy duffies in there. <laughs> um, and like if I'm doing podcast interviews or anything like that, it, it's a little challenging because I'm not as separated from everybody. So there's more sound. A lot of times you can't hear it on recordings, but I can hear it and it's distracting. So uh, that's something we're trying to figure out in the next year we might get an office space outside the house to use or something like that but yeah so moving has been a cool significant change um you know just thinking about like asmr it's been really interesting for me to see that asmr has continued to grow so much i didn't really expect that you know thinking back like a few years ago um i mean i started doing this what i mean like 2000, I don't know, 2007, 2008, something like that, I think. Or no, no, not 2000, that's early, like 2011, rather, <laughs> I think. Um, that's probably about right, 2011 or so, so it's been, been quite a while. Um, but back then, you know, I thought that ASMR was starting to grow and that it's going to get some traction. And then at a certain point, I figured, like, I thought it would sort of be what it is and then kind of flat plateau, but... I didn't expect for in 2018 for it to be continuing to get more and more more, more popular. Um, you know, obviously there there's been all these series of the celebrities doing ASMR videos, and a lot of people have done you know their own version of it on their channel for popular YouTube channels, and you know some of the big ASMR content creators out there right now are doing really innovative and amazing stuff, including collaborations and all kinds of stuff. So it's it's cool. It's like I'm. Definitely, definitely an old hat in the field, but it's it, it, there's still sort of like a little bit of a sense of pride there to see other people kicking ass and 
I don't want to call it the field of ASMR, but just the whole thing continuing to be um, popular and uh, engaged with. That's pretty cool, I think. Let's see, what else? Um, so in this year, I released my first online course. It was called uh, Kick Anxiety's Ass. It's still available. And that was a, a labor of love. That was a really interesting experience. And it continues to be as I um, kind of go into the... It was a labor of love. And it continues to be as I go into the sort of... Um, planning phases of, of what to do next with it and, and how to continue um, using it as a source of revenue and getting it out to people to benefit from. But I'm really proud of the content that I put out, took a whole lot of work, and now it's out there. So that brings my like total repertoire of things that I've put out there. I have two books, technically three. I have one tiny little pamphlet that I've put out and one online course, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, I, I am really happy to, to, to say that the podcast has been growing a lot this year. Um, it's actually become one of my uh, most like engaged with platforms, meaning I get the most like listens versus views on YouTube or, you know, um, it's like, I don't know, it's like my biggest audience, I guess you could say now, which is cool. And I've been really happy to do like all sorts of different topics, uh, question and answer, deep dive topics. And more recently I've been doing a whole lot of interviews and I have had some really good guests, including, uh, Katie Morton, the therapist who does YouTube videos. Um, I've had the director of the ketamine clinics in Los Angeles. Um, I had somebody on who has not been released yet, but somebody who talks about personality disorders and uh, important topics like school shootings and stuff like that. So I've had a lot of really good guests and I'm excited to continue doing interviews. Interviews are something that I, I really enjoy and um, it's been good to sort of uh, be back in the saddle with that and continue refining my craft as an interviewer. So that's been good. And yeah, I don't know what else. I, it's just been a year that's been very successful for me and very interesting to try to craft a perfect balance between home life and work and work number two. <laughs> so my clinical work as a neuropsychologist, my Duff the Psych brand and the stuff that I do there, including books and courses and all of that, podcasts, etc. And then um, family, you know, my boys, my wife, I think that I've been doing a good job, but it's uh, something that is always a uh, balancing act. I'm really lucky that I can, um, go ahead and make what I want out of my life. You know, I have a lot of privilege in that. Um, I've recently made the decision to start working less in my clinical job as a neuropsychologist. Um, I realized that I was basically working a full-time job, but squeezing it into just a few days. And so that meant I was doing a lot of report writing at night. And I was, I was getting to the point where I was actually kind of stressing myself out. Less stressed, but more exhausted. You know, like, I was getting stuff done. I wasn't screwing up. And I was functioning fine in all of these realms. But I realized it was a course that was not sustainable. And also I realized that I was neglecting certain basic things like, like it was the hardest thing in the world to schedule a haircut or like to go to the doctor for a checkup or anything like that. And I wanted a little bit more sort of margin in my life. So I've made some adjustments. I'm, I'm basically working three days a week and then I have, uh, I'm trying to get all of my work, work, work done at the office and not bring it home with me, which is a process, but I've been making progress on that front. And then um, I have my Death the Psych stuff, which I have a few days a week to work on and nights. And then, you know, I, I get to do a lot of stuff with the family. I take Remy to school a few days a week. I hang out with Leo 
one or two days a week. Um, I get to do a lot of stuff and very lucky for that. Um, a couple top things from the uh, from the year. So like some favorites and like top ranked things, I guess. Um, my favorite album from this year was uh, an album called From the Gallery of Sleep by The Night Verses. Um, Night Verses are a, uh, like a progressive rock band. They are people that I actually know. Well, I know their drummer. He went to high school with me, and um, I, I met their guitar player a few times during that time. So the album's called From the, From the Gallery of Sleep, but it's not necessarily a sleep album. It's actually like hard progressive rock. But the thing is, it's instrumental. They used to have a singer. They had two albums um, with a singer. He was, uh, his name was uh, Doug, Doug uh, Robinson, I believe, from uh, the band The Sleeping. And uh, he was a singer for two of their albums, but they parted ways and they continued making music. And this instrumental album is amazing. It's bonkers. It's like some of the, the first track on that album that's called, um, it's called Copper Wasp. It's just like, an instrumental crazy blast to the face of amazing musicianship. Eric, the drummer, is really, really good. And the guitar player, I mean, there's it's a trio. There's only three of them. And each of them are amazing at their instruments. And um, one of the reasons it's my top album for the year is that I have really been loving instrumental music to get work done. You know, when I was working on my course, I listened to this album a lot. And... Uh, Currently, I'm writing other projects, and I find myself listening to just instrumental music a lot. And, you know, there's a lot of ambient, um, like, calm instrumental music that I do enjoy. There's, of course, piano music, things like that. Um, I really love, like, lo-fi hip-hop, but uh, this sort of genre of, like, hard instrumental rock really gets me going. And it really makes me, like, I type really fast when I'm listening to it, and... Uh, it just keeps the momentum going. So that's been great. So from the Gallery of Sleep by Night Verses, that's my album of the year. My movie of the year is going to have to be Infinity War. So Marvel Infinity War. I I know that there are better films that have come out this year, like technically speaking, but I do love the Marvel movies. I love the MCU. And this has just been the culmination of so much. The movie was not perfect. It uh, moved very fast. It doesn't hold your hand at all if you're not familiar with every single movie they've made before this. But it's just one of those things that's like, okay, this is the culmination of so many different pieces of work. And I think they did a really good job with it. And it's entertaining. There's like some really cool stuff. Um, spoilers for Infinity War. If you haven't seen it by now, skip forward a little bit. You should see it by now, though. Um, like, it was cool to see, like, Hulk get his ass kicked by Thanos, who can actually fight versus Hulk, who's just, like, unrefined, and well, I guess he knows how to fight a bit from being with, you know, the in the arena and such, but he got his ass kicked. It was awesome seeing, like, little moments, like um, Cap and Black Panther running really fast in front of everybody during the fight in Wakanda. It was, like, a small touch that I thought was, like, super cool, and uh, it was the, the fight with Thanos on Titan, was really cool. Like, it was really awesome to see Doctor Strange just be a total Sorcerer Supreme, you know, Crimson Bands of Sidorak, and all these different things that are just, like, straight-up comic book or, you know, um, cartoon moves that were just like, yes, it was so cool to see it translated to the big screen. And it was just, it was great. So that's my top uh, movie for the year, and I'm super, super hyped for the next Avengers. Um... And then my top meal for the year was my birthday dinner. I had my 30th birthday in October. And we went to, me and Joelle and two of our friends went to a restaurant here in Ojai called, what was it? It's an Italian restaurant in like this little house called Nick, uh, Nick, it was called Nocchiola. Nocciola, or Nocciola, I'm not sure which one it would be pronounced as, um, but it was so good. It was expensive. This was a, definitely a splurge dinner, meaning uh, 
several hundred dollars <laughs> and we did a course menu that we made like we just kind of got a bunch of stuff to share I can't even remember at this point we had like three starters which were we had a like a beet like a beet salad with some sort of cheese in it which was delicious we had quail legs and we had um what was the third thing we had one other starter i forget we had another starter and that was really good too um and, and it might have been like short rib or something like that and then we had uh three pastas um we had a really good beef ravioli we had a like a scratch made parpadelli with a uh, wild boar and we had this really good risotto and then we had a couple entrees i think one was a uh, i think we did a pork chop and duck and then we had like two bottles of wine during the dinner and we had gone and tasted wine previously to that and uh we came home and had some tiramisu that my wife had made the second bottle of wine we had at dinner was like yeah, I think it's like a hundred fifty dollar bottle of wine or something like that. We have a friend who was with us who's a sommelier and we're just like, pick something, it's all good, just go for it. So it was very, very indulgent, very, very expensive, but holy shit, it was good. So that's kind of like a once in a great while sort of thing, and I was really happy to be able to do it because I've never done anything like that, and I think I deserve it, and it was really good. So that's my top dinner of the year. Just a couple things that I'm thinking about for the future and just to update you on i am currently working on two books one is uh, the first draft of it's done i'm going through and doing some editing right now and we'll be putting in graphics and tables and different stuff like that but it's a uh, book i had mentioned quite a while back um, it's a book called does my mom have dementia so kind of bridging the gap between my two different uh, like work focuses so doing the neuropsychology but also in my own voice. So it's a guide for um, like children of elderly parents for the most part and helping them understand what the normal aging process is and then what dementia is, different types, warning signs, how to deal with doctors, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that one is gonna be released you know, as soon as we get everything together. It's, it's moving along quite well. The other one is in the early, early stages. I'm still doing the kind of brainstorming and planning stage, but I'm going to be working on a um, a workbook for my anxiety book. So a lot of you guys know I have an anxiety book. It's called Hardcore Self-Help Fuck Anxiety. So I'm going to be doing a workbook for that, which takes basically the content from the book and expands it out, gives you a lot of worksheets and different activities to do. So that'll be coming out this next year as well, hopefully. I am currently expanding the team over here at Duff the Psych. Um, I'm actually in the process right this very moment of hiring somebody to work as an assistant. Um, I've tried out a few different people this year and different kind of um, companies and organizations that have, that have helped out, but um, nothing has stuck quite yet. So continuing to refine and try to expand the team in, in a helpful way. Um, I would really like to go on like a legit vacation. <laughs> I've never, I've never been out of the country except for Mexico, so I might want to change that. And uh, yeah, just like I'd really like to go on a nice vacation with my family at some point next year, and then continue to find a really good balance is one of my goals. Uh, I think I'm doing a good job of working toward that, but hopefully I can lock that in and continue to grow in all these different spheres. So that's my little uh, update. Why don't we go ahead and uh, switch gears and do some other things that are nice and uh, triggering for you in the ASMR sense. Thank you for listening and I hope that you've had a really good year too. All right, so this is one of our Christmas trees. We actually have two Christmas trees this year. One big one and one little one. You can't really see the full perspective here, but this is actually only like a four foot tree and it's actually standing on some boxes this is in our den area maybe i can pull back and show you more of the full perspective hold on notice the little 
barrier so the kids can't get to it. So yeah, my wife, Joelle, wanted to have like a formal tree and a family tree. And this is our family tree. The formal one basically has um, just pretty stuff. We like gold and silver ornaments and like a little, I don't know what to call it, a little banner and stuff like that. And that one's a big one, like uh, seven feet or something like that, eight feet, I don't know. This one's a tiny one, and this has all of our like personal ornaments. So I thought it would be fun to show some of them to you, which I've done before in the past, but uh, it's been a while. So I'm just going to kind of like go over, grab one, bring it back, and talk about it. So that one there is the most recent purchase. Pretty self-explanatory. Joelle saw this at a store downtown and could not resist getting the felt stuffed tequila ornament. This one here is pretty special. This is our, let's see if I get to focus, our first Christmas together as married, as a married couple, 2010. That was a little while ago now. We've had a tradition of getting an ornament for the family every year. And so there's quite a few of those on this tree. See, I'm going to move the camera here. Maybe I can uh, get a little closer and show you some of them. So this one here is Remy's first Christmas, 2016. It's got a little fox on it. This one is like a cross-stitched, I guess is what you would call it. It's got like a wooden frame and then it's stitched across like that. I think that's called cross-stitch. Sorry if I'm wrong. <laughs> and then over here, this is a really old ornament. It says Robert on it. And it's like beads. I don't know what you call this technique, but obviously it's around an egg shape. This was one that my grandmother gave to me, uh, my paternal grandmother, who is no longer around. I think this one she gave to me too. This one is a, uh, yeah, I know it's from her because it says to Robbie, and her side of the family is the only side that calls me Robbie, 1995. From grandma. It's got a drum on it because I played drums since back then. Here we have Leo's first Christmas, which is this year. So we got Remy's the fox and Leo's with the lion. And this one is a, a wooden ornament that's just painted on. I think it's really cute for my little lion man.
some of these will not exactly be going back to the same place. So, apologies to the uh, more obsessive among you. Let's take a gander over here. So this one is our family ornament this year. Very, very simple. It's just like an acrylic ornament that has the Duff Family 2018 written on it. I see one back here. This is one of my favorites. Pull it off here for you. if you can see that. Yeah, that says the Deaf Family 2012. And this one is like a ceramic one, and it's stamped into it. I really like the sound of this one. See him, he's right in here. This is just like a, I don't know, you call him a Yule horse or something like that. Scandinavian horse. But this guy right here, that is Harry Potter diving for the snitch. Big Harry Potter fan, and this was purchased for me while the books were still being released when I was super into reading them. And now, right now, currently, I am reading uh, Remy and Leo, the illustrated versions of the Harry Potter books, which are amazing if you haven't seen them yet. Okay, let's do a little bit of camera movement here. This is a very precarious setup I have. The camera is on a tripod that's balancing on an ottoman <laughs> and I'm just moving the camera around to show you stuff so hopefully it's smooth enough to not be jarring. Let's get a little more to the side here. Okay so can you see this one here? Zoom in on it for you. It's a little Mickey and Minnie from Disneyland. Super cute. Little snow globe looking ornament. It doesn't actually have, you can't shake it up or anything like that, but it's see through and it has Mickey and Minnie holding a present together, which Obviously, is another uh, couple's ornament. I think we might have gotten that maybe during our first year of marriage. I can't exactly remember. We've been together for quite a while. But I like that one. Right, zooming back out. I'm going to tighten the screw here. So you might hear a little bit of mechanical sounds. And let's see if we can see Hedwig over here. This is obviously very raw and uh, unproduced. Just moving my camera around. There 
there she is. Says to Harry Potter. A little hard to get the focus here, but you get the point. To Harry Potter, Hedwig carrying a letter. Put you back here. I see a little. Is that a llama or an alpaca? I'm never certain. That one is just purely because it's fun and cute. And let's see. Do we have any other notable ones? Oh yeah, we have another uh, family ornament. Let me move you over here. stuck on. This one is a, I guess, wooden snowflake with the Dove Family 2016. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to get to focus. Let me put my finger in there. Family 2016. So just a couple years ago. It looks like this one is like burned into the wood. Maybe they use like one of those like laser forge cutters or something. There are some of these that we have together that actually Predate in the marriage from when we were actually dating. I see another um, drum one back here. You're probably not going to be able to see it. Uh, yeah, it's right there. There. <laughs> it's hanging back there. It's just a drum set. I don't think I need to show it to you. Pretty self explanatory. Um, there's a cocktail shaker, there's a wine opener, for obvious reasons. Mm. I see one down here that'll pull out. We have a dragon. This is because, simply, I've always liked dragons. Um, the Chinese Zodiac, I was born in the year of the dragon. So was my little brother. Trogdor. We also have a lot of these um, precious moments. These were from Joelle's childhood. Her mom would get these, or her grandma would get these for her. And so we have a lot of these hanging around still. We have a sentimental value. OK, 
cap needs no introduction. Uh, Remy has been really into the Marvel superheroes. We've been getting him the Spider-Man toys from McDonald's. And he likes watching, he loves Captain America, he likes watching the Avengers and Captain America Civil War and um, Winter Soldier. We don't watch him a whole lot with him because he does get a little riled up. Not necessarily violent, but high energy, you know. So we watch him sometimes, but not all the time. But I have been enjoying actually watching some of the... Uh, some of the, the cartoons that, that they have streaming, you know, like there's a there's a couple new ones like uh, Iron Man and Cap, and there's like a couple ones from a few years ago like the Doctor Strange ones, and then of course there's like the old animated series that, that existed like X Men and uh, Spider Man and all of that. So I've been just watching some of those every so often. They're probably gonna have a uh, Marvel themed birthday party this year. I say they because. Leo's in January, Remy's in February, we don't need to do two different birthday parties. <laughs> okay, I think we might be winding down on this here. There are probably more around the back, but they're really difficult to get to. This one over here, I don't know if you can see it. This one is Robert and Joel, 2016. So this was obviously before we were married. But uh, yeah, lots of, lots of family ornaments, lots of sentimental value. Oh, you know what, there's one more that I'll show you that actually isn't in here. So I'm gonna have to actually leave the room and come back with it. Oh, <laughs> these ones. These are cool. My uh, my mom used to always do a uh, homemade ornament exchange with her friends. This is one of the peace sign ones she made. It's just painted wood with like wire and beads. But yeah, let me get that other ornament I was talking about. So this is the last one I'll show you. It's a Scrabble tray that says Tough 2013 on it. Obviously the 2013 is written in. And this one is significant because, well, it's Scrabble tiles because we couldn't afford anything else at the time. 2013 and 2014 were really tough years for us. And there were times when we had very little money and we were struggling just, you know, financially, emotionally, and all of that. And we're just in such a different place now. And having this around helps me remember. And helps me not take for granted what we have now because it's important not to. It could all go away someday. And I'm going to work as hard as I possibly can to make sure that doesn't happen. But it's important to have perspective. So thank you for hanging out and learning a little bit more about the ornaments on my tree. All right. Hello, everybody. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to do another cocktail video. I've done lots of these for the ASMR Mixology series. So I may have done this cocktail before. I can't remember, but I'm assuming I, I probably did. I'm going to be doing what's called a Rob Roy cocktail, which is essentially a Manhattan, but made with scotch instead of American whiskey, such as rye or bourbon. But I'm using 
this, which was a Christmas present, so I got this literally yesterday. It's Glenfiddich, which is a single malt scotch, but this is aged in bourbon barrels and finished in American yew oak. So it's scotch, but it has a little bit of the American whiskey sort of characteristic, a little bit smooth and uh, like kind of vanilla-y, more than you would expect for a scotch. So I thought this would work really well with a Rob Roy. So I'm gonna need this scotch. As well, I will need some sweet vermouth. So this is the sweet vermouth I'll be using. Um, sweet vermouth is basically a fortified wine. So you need to be sure to keep it in the fridge, otherwise it will go bad, even though a lot of bars do not keep it in the fridge. And then the last ingredient is just bitters, it's cocktail bitters, which I have right here. So I have Woodford Reserve aromatic bitters. Um, traditionally you would use Angostura bitters. I am um, out of Angostura bitters, and I'm just about out of these two. Just have a few drops left. You don't need much, but um, I certainly am running out of all my bitters. <laughs> I thought I might get some Angostura bitters as a stocking stuffer, but alas, I did not. So uh, you're gonna need these bitters, and it's a very simple recipe. It's two, two, to one. So uh, two parts the spirit of uh, scotch, and then one part the sweet vermouth. Um, I'm probably going to use about three ounces to one and a half ounces, but you can use any amount that you want. You just got to keep the ratio about that. Some people might use a little bit less sweet vermouth, but I, I tend to like having you know, a full part of it. Um, and then I'll top it off with a cherry. So the equipment I'll be using is this really cool mixing glass. I got this from a local antique shop. So there's a really, really cool antique shop by us. And I love a good mixing glass. And this one is not the one I'm, the type that I've had my eye on, but I saw it in the store and thought it was really awesome. And it is listed as a Great Depression era. So that's pretty cool. And it has a little handle. I prefer the ones without a handle, but for that time, you know, Great Depression time is very typical. You'd see cocktail pictures with a handle um, and the little fluted part right here. So I really like this one. I think it has a lot of character. So I'm going to be mixing in this. I have a strainer and uh, I will be drinking it out of a nice little cocktail cooper here. So let's get started. Got my mixing glass, and we'll start off with the scotch or Glenfiddich. I'm gonna use the uh, big side of this jigger here, which is one and a half ounces. The other side is one ounce. So two of these. So one and a half ounces there. And then truly the last 
last ingredient is just the bitters. So I'm going to put a few dashes of bitters. You put in as much or as little as you like. So I kind of have to tip it on its side to get to the, the last bit here. So I have all my spirits in there. Um, last thing I'll do is add ice. So I have a little cup of ice here. Which I will add nicely. Now this drink is stirred, not shaken. You stir any drinks that have all spirits. Once you start adding things like fruit juice or other mixers, that's when you would shake it. But for something like this, you would stir the drink, uh, similar to a martini. And uh, this is both to mix the drink, to cool it down, and to add some dilution because water is an ingredient in cocktails. You an extra long stir there because sounds. <laughs> so next we have our coupe glass. And we'll just strain it into that. And then finish with the cherry. I have these uh, Trader Joe's dark Morello cherries. cocktail made with uh, bourbon barrel aged scotch so let's test this puppy out and it is absolutely delicious I like the color of it it's like a really light amber sort of color kind of yellowish even and um, it tastes very good not very different than a regular Manhattan so I think this really does bridge that gap between the scotch and the bourbon um, which you might use in Manhattan I think traditionally Manhattan's made out of rye but very often you'll have it made with bourbon and so this is a, a Rob Roy that's kind of halfway between those and it's very very good and very very smooth
sure there are plenty of others. Obviously, the classic uh, cranial nerve exam and things like that. But those are a few of my personal favorites that I do come back to. subscriptions here real quick. Let's see. Scottish Murmurs. She's good. Um, definitely has, she has some really good role plays in there too. Especially like um, 
with an accent, UK accent, something like that. That'll do it really well for me. Okay, let's see. Least favorite ASMR trigger to listen to. <laughs> do it. I don't know what my least favorite would be. Like, I don't mind mouth sounds. I don't mind crinkling noises. like many people I get like misophonia from things like you know a knife grating across a plate or nails on a chalkboard that sort of thing but like I don't have any triggers that really bug me oh I was supposed to do um, my favorite trigger I was supposed to do it as well so here's some personal attention for a good one that was a really interesting experiment that a lot of 
was like, I have an ASMR video, I have to like, I don't know what the fuck to do with myself, so I'm gonna make a video and see what happens, and I can still kind of feel where I was at emotionally that day when I watched the video back. And then, um, yeah, it just, there were some role plays that, that turned out really good, and like ear touching video with the 3DO was really popular and that one did a lot for me just like in terms of the growth of my channel and financially honestly at that time so I have fond memories of that one even though I think it sucks now <laughs> Expected negative fan reaction. Not really, not fan reaction. Uh, I get people who stumble across it like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you whispering? Like, all the time. Especially because I make videos that are like, like, people might be looking for bartending stuff and find a mixology video or self help stuff and find a ASMR self help video. So, I get that, but rarely do I get like negative fan reactions. Okay, so. video of yours do you think didn't get the love it deserved? Oh man, <laughs> these are hard for me to answer because I've been really thinking about my videos. So I'm looking at my uh, little creator studio now. Let's see. I gotta scroll back a while. Still scrolling. one video that was a uh, like 360 tapping video that I had a lot of fun with. It was like I set up things all around the microphones and recorded and uh, I think it did fine but it didn't like blow up and I had a lot of fun doing it so maybe that one. You know, <laughs> I don't know if I have a picture of this somewhere still but before I got my 3DO I bought ear microphones, and I constructed the most fugly looking setup. I went to Michael's and thought, okay, what could I use for ears? And I had these, like, little rubber Halloween, like, ghoul things, and I cut them in half, and I taped one on one side of the camera, and one on the other side, and shoved the mics in there to sort of simulate ears, and it was the creepiest fucking thing ever, I swear. <laughs> okay, just a few left here. Uh, what's something the audience doesn't know about the behind the scenes of your channel? Just that I edit out a lot of, um, like, dogs running past, like my dog running past through the house can be really loud with her jingly collar, or one of my kids coughing or crying, or me burping or sneezing or my stomach growling, just stupid bodily functions usually are the thing that get in the way. Or like, like I was, a second ago I had to edit out just something that just fell over, like my wife's purse just went boom, and it was like super loud, so stuff like that is really the only thing. Um, what's the most absurd request you've received from a fan? stuff like match lighting or like can you make a, like a you know like a sexual thing or um I've had people ask me for like can you do like a sexual medical role play privately or things like that I mean a lot of stuff like when I get 
somebody that starts to be annoying and problematic, I usually just ban them from the channel. And I also have a lot of keywords that are banned in the comments, so I don't see some stuff that gets filtered out. I get weird emails, and I get a lot of crazies that, like, are very personally offended by something I'm talking about, or, like, have some sort of weird vendetta against... Often it's more about the mental health side, like mental health professionals or something, and that can be problematic, but um, I haven't really gotten too many weird requests. Okay, um, do your family and friends know you make ASMR videos? Yeah, uh, my family does. Some of my friends do, some don't. I don't really talk about it or advertise it much. Obviously, I'm not doing it much now, but like, if it comes up in conversation, which it has more recently from all the popular ASMR stuff out there, I'll be like, oh yeah, I, I had a channel, like I've made ASMR videos for years, I don't really do it much anymore, but I have a whole channel of them, so I'm not really like ashamed of it, but it doesn't really come up that much. Have you ever been recognized in public? Yes, definitely. Um, when I was making ASMR videos a lot, I would get recognized, and then people wouldn't tell me that. They would like comment later on saying I saw you instead of coming up to me, which I thought was silly. My most memorable time being recognized, though, was actually, um, I was leading a support group, or like a therapy group, a group therapy session at, um, like a large healthcare facility that I was doing my pre-doctoral internship at, and one of the group members, there were like only three or four people in the group for that day, one came up after and asked, you know, uh, do you have a YouTube channel? And I'm like, yes. She's like, or do you make like ASMR videos? Yes, oh my god, I love your stuff, blah, 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 blah. So that was pretty funny because we went, I was her therapist through a whole session and we did, you know, guided relaxation and all this stuff and then she came to me afterward, which was interesting. What inspires your video ideas? <laughs> Nothing now. Since I'm not making you smart videos more than like once or twice a year, um, in the past, just saying what, what's cool scenarios related to role plays or things I do in my life would be potentially triggering. Not a very good answer there. Where do you find yourself spending the most time online? Uh, Spotify, <laughs> YouTube, uh, and social media. I used to be on Reddit a lot. I'm not very much now. Mostly, I'm just on social and then having stuff in the background while I work. And uh, what advice would you give someone who wanted to make their own ASMR content? My advice would be go slow. Uh, you don't need to just jump straight to like the most epic content. Establish a connection with your audience. Answer comments. You know, see what people like. Everybody has their own particular strengths and weaknesses. So see what's up, you know, and see what you're good at. Everyone's going to be good at something and learn sort of the instrument, you know, like everything from mic placement to like how, how quiet you should be when you're really close like this versus farther away, um, what different types of voice styles or visual styles or sounds you tend to gravitate towards. Just practice, like make videos and don't release them, or make videos and, and release them without a lot of fanfare, and just see how it turns out, and really practice it, and then as you get bigger, start to approach some of these things, maybe, you know, you have a certain milestone, once I hit 500 subscribers, I'll do my cranial nerve exam, once I hit 1,000, I'll do, you know, this other role play, or whatever, and, you know, just take your time with it, there's no rush. ASMR is the last thing that should be rushed, right? So, that would be my advice. Also, just, like, learn the equipment you're working with. If it's a camera that you're recording onto and using the audio from it, like, where is the microphone on the camera? Does it have one or two microphones? Same thing with your phone. Um, if it's a microphone that's external, make sure you understand, you know, what recorder you're recording into versus the camera, all that stuff. Just, like, I keep wanting to say, like, learn your instrument, <laughs> but basically learn your instrument. One thing that, I guess, the behind the 
this instinct for non-ASMR content creators is that you don't really realize how um, taxing it is to whisper for a long time. You can actually really like run out of breath easily. And this guy's out of breath.
see you again soon. Maybe not for this reason.